I'm down here in deepest, darkest Dorset, and freezing. I don't know, it's a, it's a northeasterly wind, it's not looking good. I'm making some rain, big, nasty, swirly clouds coming, and I'm really open. It's uh, down at a place called Woolland, and I've been fighting with my sat nav who says Woolland does not exist. And I put the postcode on, it says the postcode does, not, uh, postcode does not exist. I've had a nightmare trying to find this place. Beautiful scenery around here. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. If you want peace and solitude, this is a place to come. So, took a gamble on this one. Just <clears throat> scouting through websites, stumbled on it. I thought, do you know what? It looks a nice area, we'll give it a go. Well, it's now <laughs> 10 past 12. I started at 12 o'clock. I left at 10 to 9 this morning. It took me two and a quarter hours to get down here. But I don't know, I'm on, I'm on three lakes. Let's explain it. There's three lakes here. There's some, some uh, like a self catering, I think it is up there as well in the Victorian barn, really, really nice place. And it's a lovely setting. It is a lovely setting. Got hills all around here. The thing is when you come to say a commercial fishery and you come to a really quiet fishery like this, the whole thing is, no doubt the fish are all in here, but how many anglers are fishing there? And on a commercial fishery, it gets a lot of angling pressure, thereby gets a lot of bait, thereby the fish know the anglers equals bait. But when there's nobody fishing, and I've got three lakes to myself here, when there's nobody fishing, they're going to revert back to natural food. So let's say they're busy on a weekend, or there's people putting bait into the weekend, maybe by Monday, the fish are picking the bait up. By about Wednesday, Thursday, today's Thursday, I feel that they're moving back off any food that's gone in and they're going on to natural food. Now there's three lakes. I will walk around them and film them later on, but the wind is bitter. Probably put my umbrella up. I've seen tiny little fish flipping on the surface. There's carp to, I think, 30 pounds in one of these small lakes. I'll have a walk around, but this one has got some colour in it. This is the lower lake. The other two are slightly tiered, smaller. Is that a bite? No, it's dragging. But they are so clear. It makes me wonder, was it ever a trout fishery in the past? It's beautiful, beautiful, clear water. I might even put the GoPro on underwater and just show you what it looks like down there. It's not the greatest day because it's cloudy, but I'm here, I'm set up. Was that a bite? No, just dragging. Don't get excited, Graham, don't get excited. I know it sounds daft, you only been 10 minutes, Graham, or 15 minutes, but I'll put a bit of bait in, and I've got, put that down there. I've got a self-loaded waggler float here, a three pound hook linked to a size 16 barbless, single grain of sweet corn, and I've thrown some ground bait and sweet corn in there. You can see just off the bushes, just there. I thought float fish close in. Feeder fish, now, there's an island here. Almost certainly when you go to most carp waters, particularly ones that get fished quite a lot, eventually the carp are gonna get pushed out and they find sanctuary around the edge of that island, which is why you generally find a lot of carp anglers. Let me shelter this microphone because it is whistly. You'll find carp anglers casting, casting to the points of the islands because the fish go around, they're gonna pass those points. You know, they keep quite tight and they try and cast tight. I sort of suck myself into the same way of thinking. If there's nobody fishing here, there's hardly any angler pressure, it makes me wonder why would they be around that island except for natural defences against predators, birds, whatever, you know, birds of prey, historically in their genetic makeup. If they're not pressured by anglers, surely they wouldn't be around that island. Am I in the wrong place? Because over here, I've got my swim feeder and quiver tip out about 15 feet off the end of the island there. So I'm about 15 feet out there, seems quite shallow, Three feet here, but we're barely three feet, not much more out there. But I'm wondering, should, you know, should I try somewhere else? Should I be into the wind as uncomfortable as it may sound? So here I am, fishing away, having done all the jobs I wanted to do. I think I'm deserving a fish, but I haven't got the vibes. Do you guys know what it's like, you know, when you go fishing? Especially at a new place. I like the excitement of a new place. What's in there, you don't know, are there fish moving? I've already scattered some bread about allowing for the wind to drift it all down. Nothing, nothing. There's a little tiny little one or two inch fish 
probably this year's fry, I would guess, just nibbling and knocking it. I haven't seen a fish move at all. But they've got uh, a good mix of fish in here, apparently, and some big carp as well. So I'm just looking for anything, bream, who knows, roach, whatever. Wow, I'm gonna have to put that umbrella up in a minute. Anyway, I shall give it, I'll give it about 15 minutes here. And if I don't get any bites, I'm gonna go up and put a bit of bait in the other two pools and just, I can follow around, have a look, put some bread on the surface and see if anything does come up. That's the way it is, guys. The more different places you try, the harder it gets. You could stumble on good fishing, but equally, you could stumble on some real tough fishing. I've got a feeling today, unless something bizarre goes on, I'm gonna have trouble tracking the fish down. No bubbles, no muds, no swirls, no movement, nothing. I reckon it's gonna be a tough day for me to find fish here. If the wind keeps, well, it's picking up, if anything, it's sort of basically coming off my back, right through a bit of a valley here. And then it's, it goes left to right, which is really annoying. But there are some small fish, just tiny, tiny fry, taking these, bumping away at these pieces of bread. I just, I've just wondered if I put a tiny pellet of bread on there, if I could catch one, they could be rudd up in the water, but they're not a very big sized fish at all, but it'd be just be interesting. And guys, I could save the blank with a three inch fish. In fact, I think three inches would be big. I think these fish are like barely two inches long from what I can see. I think I'll bring in shallow right up. I've got no shot near the float. Put it right down to my hook leg if I can get against the wind. Take the corn off and put a tiny pellet of bread on. Just to see what they are. Saving the blank boys, it is indeed. I don't even know what it is. A tiny silver roach. Save the blank, only small. I've got that down as a roach. It's not bleak, is it? Is it bleak? I don't know. You guys tell me. Looks a bit strange, doesn't it look red enough for a roach? Gotta be. But that was shallowing it up. I didn't think they were very big, those fish. Yeah, it is a very small roach. But at least I saved the blank. I had a tremble on the quiver tip, but it was a very small fish. You could see it quivering. Well, that's why it's called a quiver tip, Graham. It was quivering. I'm going to have a move in a minute. I'll have a, have a, a couple of goes with this bread again. I'm using just a very, very tiny pinch. Probably I would get them on maggots, no problem at all. But I haven't got any maggots with me. I can, I can just see him knocking the bread there now. Just set the camera up, people I'm on again. This time, waggler float over by the margins and a piece of floating crust. I saw those um, small roach dimpling and I saw a slightly bigger swirl. I'm right in the margins. I might, I might have to lose a microphone lead here because it's pretty restrictive. Hopefully, hopefully I'm in about the right angle here, people. People all try fishing and filming on their own. It ain't that easy. This time I'm on my match rod. Oh no, don't twang like that. Please don't twang. Oh, nice. What's that, a ghost? It's a sort of koi type of thing. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, he's going really well, this one. It's either a ghost or one of those koi. It looks a sort of ghost. It looks a nice looking carp. I waited ages letting that bread go right along the margins with the waggler float. I've missed a couple of takes before, whether it was this fish or not, I don't know. Because um, I tend to strike when I see the, the mouth go around the bait. I couldn't quite see it, so this time I waited till that waggler float actually went under. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, people. We get to show you one, because it looks like it's a, one of those fisheries that's got some really nicely marked fish. By the way, I took off the six size 16 and went straight through to my five pound straight through. I got rid of the hook link. I just thought I'm too close to those margin snags to uh, go with a small hook and a, 
and a light link. This fish, they scrap so hard in there. I can imagine this on a lovely summer, summer's day, instead of this biting northerly wind. Hard to believe that uh, they're giving a frost tomorrow, possible air frost in places and a ground frost as well. I might have to drop the mic and go and net this fish and bring him back people. I don't want to, I'm going to do that, I don't want to lose him in the margins. Or is he, oh he's turned, he's turned, we might get lucky, he might. We might get lucky. My, my beautiful rod, match rod I paid one pound for, let's see if I can roll this fish. Just roll him, come on, come on. I'll tell you what, they're strong in here. Just one, just one, come on baby. Yes, we're in. We're, oh gee, I nearly dropped, nearly dropped the net. I've got all to the camera angle to show you this one's beautiful markings on it. Well, it's a lovely fish, look at this, it's a real spanker. Look at the size of the tail on that one. Perfect, I'm calling that a ghost. It's got, did it have a pin of bluish in the eye, which is sort of coy, but a lovely looker. Wow, am I pleased with that. So I've got one on each technique. I've gone off the roach. I've had quite a few of those small roach. It's only by seeing a slightly bigger dimple by the red crust on the surface. So always take some. I'm going to have a walk. What I might do now, people, I'll give you 10 minutes and I'll take you around the other lakes at least show you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hi. I'm on this one as well. Well, that's a good job I was standing next to it, wasn't it? I'm covered in slime. What is this one? I'm imagining it's going to be another carp. Not so big. Mind you, the, the carp I got on the feeder last time didn't actually fight a lot till it got in close. I'll move this camera. I saw I'm in a mess today. I'm having a bit of a, a, bit of a mare today. But now, hang on. I am getting a few fish. Oh, what's this? Could be different. Could be different, Graham. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Even though it's, even though it's windy and horrible, I'm going to be coming again, hopefully. Bream. Oh, he's in. I'll tell you what, it's a... Holy smoly, it's a nice bream. That is a nice bream. Oh, he's a leaping big. Oh, good. good I reckon this one's crossbred with a mako shark. You can imagine this place on a summer's day catching fish like this. I've got a horror story with a normally wind and I'm still catching. I mean, got all like spawning tubercles on his head there, which we used to get in Ireland a lot because you could fish in what was the old close season in Ireland. And we used to, everybody used to go to Ireland, you know, all the specimen hunters kept huge bags of bream there. And there we go. Mr. Bream showing up as well. Roach, carp, bream. Is it all going to come good in the end? I hope so. I hope so. Right, what I'm going to do, uh, people, I'm going to go around the other top two lakes and show you those. But before I do, I'm going to, I'm going to put some more bait. I could throw these out, actually. I don't need the catapult. I'm going to put half a dozen balls of ground bait out there just in case there's a shoal of bream. I've got to try and hopefully catapult some loose corn out there as well. I'm going to be using the wind. Now, got plenty of corn here. It's just going to try this. I mean, I might not reach that, but I'd have to put it in the ground bait. But let's see if we can get some out there. Oh yeah, wind's got that easy. In fact, I'm in the next county with that one. These, uh, these Matchman's catapults really are quite something. They're very, very, very accurate as well. Give it a good spray and then when I hopefully come back, because I think these roach must eat a lot of this bait, you know. One thing I have got is plenty of sweet corn. That's about where I want to get. Now there you go, just fill the pouch right up and pew. That's the one. 
I've been putting bread flake all along there, drifting down. Nothing, I just had that one last carp. And that's been it. So I might come back and just even try the float there, but I've got a feeling it's going to drag. Now I think anything swimming around there is hopefully going to find it. Right boys, let's have a walk around the other lake, a couple of lakes and show you what's there. Always forget something, the hand wipe. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to take a little bit of ground bait and, the, uh, and a bit of bread. And my biscuits. I've got some floating dog biscuits, some disgusting one Mike gave me. I'm going to throw them out. Oh, no, I know I must do. I must wear a pair of Polaroids, the old polarizing glasses, because around there, if they say they got fish to over 30 pounds and un uncaught monsters in there, unnamed, unknown, wouldn't it be nice to walk along and spot one? And I could spot them with these glasses on, hopefully, even though it's a cloudy day. Put that there for a minute. Okay, this one. I've come up from that one. Maybe with this camera you can see the difference in the colour. It's brown there and it's staged up here. Three stages in tiers, obviously coming down from the hills up there. Totally, totally, well I'm not even going to call it different colour, it's just sort of clarity. And let's take some floaters around. And because it's clear, look, immediately you get you get the weed growing and stuff. I've got some floaters there I'm going to throw out. So this is oak, this one's called oak, which allegedly has got the big fish in. It's also got can of the geese around it, so I imagine they're going to uh, see me throwing stuff out. I'm going to throw some biscuits out, you never know if something might come up by. I kind of doubt it, if it's just a specimen like Big Fish Lake, they probably won't come up for, uh, won't come up for floaters if it's not fish that much. Very, very clear. Got lilies down there growing. Chuck all those across, and then as I walk around, if anything does come up, I should be able to see any movement. I'm just looking for any movement. I'll give them a bit of bread as well. Why not? It's that weather, look at it. I mean, this is the view. Over there in the background is the uh, big house. It's called the Victorian Barn. And they do uh, accommodation there as well. So dead handy to, you know, to, to have a overnight there and walk up fishing here. I think they do various different types of breaks. There's some bread out as well. Don't want to waste too much because you never know something might come up. Goodness me, the wind is howling. So there is the middle lake, the specimen lake. I think that one. This one's called Alder Lake here, as the sign says. Apparently, this one's good for silver fish. I think it is. Bit of mixed fishing in here. Maybe I should have tried in here. And again, look how clear it is. Unbelievable. Now it's just been a bit of movement going across there. Is that a fish that was under those lilies? I don't know how deep this one is. It's a lot more weed. Oh, here comes a Canada goose, so we might pass on the uh, on the feeding. Anyway, you can see this one. Nice big pool. I just put the head cam on the in the underwater housing. I put it down on my pole here. And you just get an idea how just clear how clear this water is actually gonna be. Well I always like to check up the top end of any fishery because this goes down in stages, one, two, three down the hill there. So I'm assuming this little bridge here with a grill on it is to stop rubbish coming down or otters getting in. Got the otter fence here people, that I'll just show you. There it goes, electrified, that's why the insulators are there. So kids, don't hold on to that. Give you a nice little kick. And that's to keep the otters out at that height. Good show, I'm all for that. And this must be the inflow stream that feeds the lakes there. But I always like come over this bridge first, Graham, so you don't fall in. To so always take a look in these nooks and crannies like this where the inflow comes in because a lot of good uh, tench and carp, especially the two species I would say, get up in there. Even pike in the winter if the pike are in the water. 
Look at the view across that hillside, stand still. Stunning scenery here. Absolutely so quiet in the middle of nowhere, just the occasional plane. So maybe you can see the three lakes, one, two, and the third one I'm fishing in now. I'm going to have a quick look around just so you can see what's here. And I've got to be honest, I think I'm going to go back in that swim. I baited up and just sit the last two hours out there. It took me two and a quarter hours to get down here, so I'm in no rush to get lost back up in those lanes again. Sat nav didn't recognise it, but I've got a very old sat nav. Runs on brown paper, paper and string. Now, this is the specimen lake. This is oak, I think it is. But this it comes up in a little bay here. So any fishery, this I'm just, just saying this as an illustration. Very often you will get fish come up in here. Either through natural causes, you know, they just like being nice and quiet up here, or angler pressure will push them up in. They certainly don't get, don't get angler pressure on this lake, do they? Any of this part of fishery. Not that I can see anyway. The clarity is stunning. It's like a sort of I don't know, it's a, just a deep, almost a, got a blue to it, like an ocean sort of colour. See, I'm always telling you people, knowledge is key. I haven't got a clue about these three lakes. I've just rocked up, give it a go, and luckily I found some fish purely because I wanted to see the, the colour of water is what drew me. I like fishing this clear water, I would like fishing this. But with this strong wind, I can't see through the surface. And to be honest, the coloured water down there usually tells me there's more fish in there. But you could walk along here and see a 30 plus pound carp just laying somewhere. It would be fantastic to see it, but I don't think it's happening today. Nothing has come up on my floaters. Little uh, family of Canada geese there going across the water. Now, if I was going for big carp, which I'm not, I would either be at the back of that island casting there, or fishing this bank here, what they call on the wind, as uncomfortable as it seems, any food particles are blowing down this bankside, and the fish will know that, they will start to realise that. It's a sort of standard, let's have a look over there, a standard way of uh, locating carp is to fish, what we call fishing, well, and a lot of other species as well, fishing on the wind. Not nice, but if that's where the fish are, that's what it takes. I can even see my bits of bread down there, they come all the way through there, and I haven't seen any swirls. Equally good would be looking along these rushes here. Just stand up as high as you can on the edge of the bank without falling in and look along the front edge because again it's on the wind and you could cast from up there. I can see a swim up there and cast down to here if you see the fish. And even if you see the fish and they won't take, you know where to bait up. Pretty swim. So I'm going to go back down here, I think, sit in my swim and see, oh, this camera's heavy, this big one. See the last of the, uh, the day out there. Yeah, if I face the wind, you can hear it, it's absolutely howling. All anglers know it's horrible for fishing. And I've got the Canada geese as well. Now, at least they know to go over the electric fence. Hopefully I can pick just one or two other fish up before I have to pack up and find my way out. Good spot, nice spot, I like the spot.
getting down on the ground bait. There's my rig, open-ended cage feeder, a swivel stopping in our shot, and then down to a hook link, and there, single grain of sweet corn. I'm going to put that out to where I catapulted all that loose corn and see if we can't at least Bosh, might have been a little bit far there. Might pick a fish up. We might, might pick a fish up. Be nice to close out on one, wouldn't it? What I've done is got the rod rest quite high. And basically, I'm just, I'm just letting the, the pressure of the wind blow and pull the tip over. I don't want to crank it right over. I'm just letting the wind push on that belly of the line and just enough to put a little bit of tension on the tip there. I've got a small fish nibbling already, I think. A roach. Could just be gust of the wind. As the wind gusts against it, it's going to pull the tip down. And, you know, I'm waiting for a good bite effectively. So I might wind the float rod in here. Well, wind it in, it's in. Not use that. Switch over, put two high rubber and fish out over there with uh, two feeders. Guys, I only just switched the camera on. I thought it was on and it's not. I've got one hooked up on the float. It's amazing, they keep coming in trying to get in this bankside marshy stuff. Oh, a match rod, five pound line and a carp. Wouldn't it be nice to close out on this fish? It's now 10 past four. I might give it to a five, but I've got a long, long chunter back through the lanes if I can ever find my way out. Come on fish, just give us one more. I dare say he's the same sort of, but my golly do they scrap? I'm gonna have to move down on this one. He's underneath me. And again, I've got the feeder rod out and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to keep feeding for those roach and every time I see a slightly bigger swirl, man, I'm going to get blown in the water and I don't go in there, bud. A slightly bigger swirl, then I'm... Uh, every time I see a slightly bigger swirl, I'm going to cast a piece of tiny crust to it. It could be a big roach, could be a big rud and it looks like a halfway decent carp here. Um, my goodness me, he is giving me some trouble. Digging and digging, he will not roll on the top. Mind, I mean, I'm on a match one for goodness sake, so. I think I'm going to stand up, I can get a bit better angle on him. Let's have a look at him. Yeah, there's solid, chunky scrappers in here. The thing with a match rod is, I have my chance there. Oh, I missed him. He's in. Oh yeah, nice looking mirror. Nice looking mirror. Fat, fat as a barrel. Mint condition. Lovely fat fish. Now look at the belly on that. And that's hardly any anglers fishing here. So they must be on natural food, mustn't they? Nice looking fish. I'm on again boys. I am on again. I might be able to get this one quick. Or yes. Whacker, do another nice mirror. Off the top with a float. Waggler float fishing with bread. Way to go. And look, the sun's coming out as well. Really nice chunky fat looker. Let's slide that one back. There he goes.
fish are on a feeder this time. Now, here's a, I'm assuming this is a carp. Here's a tip, if you're getting fish, I say four or five pounds, and you've got the feeder out the water and a reasonable length of tail to it, don't forget, the closer you get the fish to net in, there's no stretch, there's no give. The only give is in the rod, not in the line itself. There's no stretch in the line. So consequently, a big fish, a decent sized fish, four or five pounds or so bigger, will sh bolt and shock against that feeder. It doesn't matter that your, your drag set, everything's all okay. Just the weight of the feeder hanging in the air gives him a dead weight to pull against. And sometimes you can pop a fish off. So consequently, best if you've got a feeder with a lighter hook link, like match fishermen do, and you take your time with it a little bit. The weather, it's a funny day, it's a funny day. I've, I've had very, very, very few bites. They just go. <laughs> they just pull, pull over when they do go. This one's trying to get me down in the marginal tree there. Ooh, he could have popped me off then. It's the weight of the feeder that worries me. And sometimes if you, I'm jerking the camera out a bit there, sorry about that guys. Sometimes if you lay the rod down low, you can get the fish coming easier because it turns them over on their side. It's turned into a really good day, isn't it? It's weird. I'm getting blasted and blown all over the place, but it has turned into a really good day if I get this fish out. Why are they fighting so hard? I do not know. It's the way it is. Looking like a really nice ghost carp, I think, guys. Or a very light common. I can't make my mind up. Got him. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh yes, fish, fish of the day people, fish of the day, on the mat with this one. Now is this one a ghost or a really nice, now it's a ghost colour I can tell, or just a light common, what do you guys think? That's a spanker isn't it? I'm just looking at the top of it there, those markings, that slightly greeny tinge along the top of the head there. I've got that down as a sort of ghost. And at the top end of the eye, he's got that bluey color that sometimes you get with koi's. But well pleased with that one. And there we go, it's a close out fish. Oh, let's pick him up. Fish got go. I think he's got eight pounds or so, I would think. He looks eight to me, so let him recover in that net. You see the light color of his back there? Pretty sure that's like a ghost in that. I feel really bad. How many times before have I said, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, I'm going now, and I'm not. Oh, I just talked to the bailiff, Terry. He said, have you ever seen any of the chub in here? I kid you not, I kid you not, it's a chub. Oh my God. <laughs> what the? <laughs> What is this fishery? I just spoke to Terry the bailiff, he sat talking with me. He said, you want to see the chub in here? Oh my God, check this out on the map, people. What a fish to close with. Absolutely, a stonking great still water chub. He'd just literally gone, Terry, he was talking to me all about the 30 pound carp down here and this and that and that. Oh, he said, I'm surprised you haven't had one of the big chub. Look at that. What a cracker. I'm going to tell you, I think that's as big. I've caught still water chub before. I don't honestly think I've caught one this big. Beauty. Look at the size of this still water chub, people. And the mouth on it, he's still got bread in there. He has been noshing big time. Look at the bread he's coughing out. Look. And away he goes. Well, yeah, a bailiff was telling me, come back and have a go at Oak, he said, you want a really windy day, and some big, big carp in there. I'm happy with the big chub. Guys, it's really windy, I'm going to have to pack up, I've got a long drive home, I was going to leave at five. It's been nearly nine o'clock before I get home. Let's see if I ever find my way out of this maze of lanes they've got down here. Again, thanks for watching, guys. 
I didn't have one more car, so I won't leave. I had a really good day. Tough, tough, tough to start with. Terry said the wind's killed, it's stone dead. My goodness, if I've caught all this when it's stone dead, can you imagine what it's like when it's really going fishing well? Wow, good place, good place. I'll try to get the camera. <laughs> I've cast that again, I've got another fish on. <laughs> I'm just never gonna get home at this rate. This can't be a chub, this is like a 19 pound chub if it is. It's gotta be a carp. They do go somewhere, that's gotta be a carp. First cast out after talking to Terry, I thought, well, the swim's died now because I've been feeding it. <laughs> Piece of bread, bosh, the float disappears, berries, sinks, submerges. That's a carp. This old one pound match rod is earning its keep. Nearly, I think I got him. He's in. Oh, there we go, people. Another one, about, I don't know, five pounds. I've lost count now. I've lost the plot totally. I can't keep fishing on being such big doo-doo. We'll see you guys on the next film. If it's anything like this one, it's gonna be good. Back you go, my beauty. Straight away. You didn't want to come out of the net. Gone.